Hi, everyone. Uh, so uh, my name is Donatas. I'm head of Mysterium Network, and I'm very excited to be here. Uh, and I also have Mantas, one of our tech leads with me here as well. So just uh, quickly about me uh, at Mysterium Network, as mentioned, uh, I'm managing quite a lot of different things, but my true passion is, is product development. And I'm really glad we can have this workshop here today explain what mysterium currently working on and also invite all of you to realize your ideas on top of mysterium network and we'll try to show how easy is that with this workshop mantas do you want to tell uh, a few words about you uh yes so my name is mantas domashevich uh, i am a tech lead at uh, mysterium uh, network uh, I mostly work on the front end things related, but also back end. Uh, and uh, uh, currently, I'm leading the efforts of uh, MissNodes.com and uh, the Node UI for our Mysterium node. That would be shortly about me. All right. So thanks, Mantis. And then uh, uh, let's spend five minutes, and then I'll just quickly explain what we do and what Mystery Network is all about. So Mantis, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so Mysterium is open source and permissionless debt free project. Uh, essentially, we are peer to peer bandwidth and IP address marketplace running on blockchain. We were founded in 2017 by a group of developers and entrepreneurs. And since then, our uh, core team grew to almost four. And as our whole project, we are decentralized. We are uh, based all around the world. Um, so as you can see on, on this slide, uh, our network has a few different parts. So on one side, on the left, you see providers. So those uh, who are sharing their bandwidth and IP addresses. On the other side, we have consumers. So uh, retail users, businesses using apps built on top of Mystery Network for various purposes like decentralized VPN, data scraping, which we'll also cover in our workshop. Uh, then talking a bit more about providers and like the backbone of our uh, network, we have over 20,000 of them. Uh, in over 120 countries. So it's not just like, I know, five or six countries. Uh, we are covering the whole world and all the continents. Well, maybe except Antarctica. And 13,000 of them, of those providers, they have the most valuable residential IPs. Uh, providers run our node software on devices such as PCs, laptops, Raspberry Pis, TV boxes, so basically anything uh, what can run a simple code. We don't require a lot of hardware resources, so it's uh, it's really easy and convenient. And by doing so, uh, those providers sharing their their resources, as mentioned before, bandwidth and residential APs. And this node network functions similar to Tor network, uh, but we also have micro economy built in so nodes are paid for the amount of traffic they are giving to the network and as i mentioned before mysterium network is open source and permissionless that's really important uh, because it means it's not only us building apps and using mysterium network but it can be anyone who can start building their solution right away uh, on our network so you don't need to ask permission from us. You just come connect to the network and, and do it. And we want your ideas. So we'll show one of the uh, use case today, but then can be anything what you see a network is valuable for. So uh, today we'll focus on one of the use cases, as I uh, told before, data scraping, and we'll show how easy is to build a simple data scraping app and start using Mysterium Network to access data you need uh, in also at different countries. Data scraping itself, uh, it has two major needs to be accomplished. So one of them being access to a wide residential IP network and the other one 
ability to gather data from websites, for example, filling request form, then collecting data from, um, let's say, pricing data from the website. And Mysterium Network provides you with out of the box pay as you go solution for the first. So you get instant access to residential IP network and scrape data from multiple countries around the world. And that's important because let's say if you want to scrape pricing data, uh, which varies a lot compared from different regions, and also it varies a lot compared to if if you take like if you scrape it from data centers, you probably won't be able to do that. You will need real residential APs to do that. And before we jump to the actual workshop, and I hand over to Mantas, just wanted to mention that we are also ready to support your idea and provide seed funding for it. So if you need more information about it, just contact us after the workshop or also ask us in Q&A session after this workshop. So yeah, Mantas, stage is yours. Thank you, Donatas. Um, so we've been thinking uh, how we could present uh, our product to you. Uh, basically, the idea is uh, how we could present this for a developer. Because, uh, well, everybody know, knows what is a VPN. And uh, the best idea was, uh, at least uh, in my head, to give you a small uh, example. Uh, this one will be based in JavaScript. Uh, however, we are not limited to JavaScript. This, uh, this JavaScript uh, example is just because we uh, already published the Mysterium VPN uh, JavaScript library that you can use in your JS projects. And uh, with the help of Puppeteer, we will do some web script. Now, you can see all, all of the rest of the dependencies are just... Uh, just the support for TypeScript, and uh, you can also omit all of these. Um, so uh, to show you how the VPN works, I will be using Docker, uh, because if I would be running a VPN on my uh, native OS, it would require me to reset the internet connection every time, so I don't wish to do that. But uh, using Docker, we may skip the step altogether and just uh, have a node running and the proxy through it to uh, the desired country. So just to give you an idea how simple it is, uh, this is basically the entire configuration in the Docker Compose for a single node to be launched. Uh, OK, so let's just maybe start with an example. Uh, by the way, this I will send you a link. You can find this uh, ex working example in, uh, in GitHub. Uh, there's some minor configuration. Everything will be explained in the readme file. Um, there are a couple of scripts. So the first one is uh, read start. So what this does is just runs a docker compose up command. Uh, this just brings up the entire fleet of nodes. I have configured uh, nodes for different countries like uh, Germany, Canada, United Kingdom, US, Japan, Ukraine, and Lithuania. Um, and the idea is to have all these nodes running uh, concurrently so that the scraping use case could be uh, achieved faster, I guess. Now, now that we have the nodes running, I call those nodes fleet. Uh, we should also and issue a command, which is now uh, will be using the Mysterium VPN JS to instruct each node to connect to the respective country. So here we go, fleet connect, it's attempting to connect, uh, and also establishing a proxy server that we can HTTP through. So success, success, success. And just to mention here, like any of these, countries could be one of those 120 countries plus we support. So Mantas now took uh, seven, seven of them, but you can, for example, scrape out of 100 countries if needed. Yeah, OK. So we were fortunate enough to also see a fail safe. Like we have implemented a connection retry mechanism. So yeah, the first, the first connection failed, so I provided the second one succeeded. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so let's start with the um, most basic use case, uh, Google. Uh, so we're just gonna run a script that basically uh, launches seven browser instances, each connected to a respective country, and it's, each will just enter my location, wait a bit, and take a screenshot. Uh, so there we go, it's finishing up. So the idea would be to demonstrate that we are actually connecting to the internet from different countries, different locations together. Uh, now all of the uh, all of the rest of the examples will also be just screenshots. Turns out uh, crafting a scraping use case where we actually just uh, parse the data out of the DOM is uh, <laughs> kind of quite quite a difficult thing, and uh, it, it would wouldn't be that much exciting actually. So. Uh, so another use case we thought it would be interesting to show would be uh, Booking.com. Uh, we basically just uh, typed in a date for when we would like to go to a certain country uh, and uh, see, well, if the offers differ across uh, a set of countries. And uh, actually, we were surprised that there are some differences, although you know everything I guess might be in fine print. Okay, so I think that this yeah the screenshot was taken. It's just uh, some small issue. Uh, so here you see we can. Um, there's like a, a Canadian version of the query. Then there's a, a German version of the same query. And uh, I have a suspicion that 2,631 Canadian dollars is much less than 2,656 euros. So, you know, maybe there's some discount in, in here if you are willing somehow to order this hotel through Canada. Uh, we can also go further Great Britain, so that might be similar. Um, also, uh, strange Japan doesn't even have that listing. This one is from Ukraine. Yeah. So this this is sort of like a, a, a visual, uh, maybe you know, vacation planning that you can do with this simple example, if you're into this kind of thing. Yeah, and for example, other uh, other ones like which uh, are common data scraping use cases are scraping, uh, let's say, car rental prices. Those are definitely different, looking from uh, from different countries. For example, if you're booking car uh, in Europe from US, you will get the lower price compared if you're booking from Europe in Europe. Uh, and then there are quite a few websites already trying to get used of this. So providing this intermediary service where uh, you book from uh, through them, you get the better price when booking directly, but then essentially what they're doing in the backstage, they are booking through the different region, like through the different country, let's say through US in Europe, and then just reselling it, uh, it to you. Uh, so these examples we're showing right here, uh, they are kind of like the most common ones, but there are lots of different use cases where like, uh, which can be used to, to collect data uh, in, in the internet. Uh, our, um, our use cases for scraping are also sometimes the web pages cache uh, results you get, uh, like for a certain IP address. So by going for different IPs, you can like overcome the caching issue and get the most recent data, like say real estate uh, prices and, and, and listings and whatnot. Uh, but again, we're not a scraping company, we're a VPN company. We're trying just to show you um, how easy it would be to integrate like a scraping use case uh, using the Mysterium node. Uh, 
there there was some more i think uh yeah uh you know uh, there's also uh, like maybe what what's that term uh, the echo chamber effect that you can like uh, try to look around what uh, what is put up up, up front in uh, say youtube uh, when browsing through different countries, like what topics are relevant there for, I don't know, users or that particular residential IP. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, in, sky's the limit. It's, it's your imagination, what you can do. So, uh, these examples are nice and uh, whatnot, I feel. So, one last thing uh, I at least wanted to show you is how much code does it take to have um, to, to run this example. So the entire code like example is uh, is in here. Of course, there's a bit more of the code if we go here. Uh, but all it's doing, it's just the puppeteer launch uh, a browser with few options. The key option is proxy server. Uh, start a new page, page go to URL, wait for some time, and maybe the, do some action before taking the screenshot like uh, in YouTube case, there's a, a pop-up for terms and conditions, uh, and then take the screenshot and just close the browser. Uh, so this this basically is uh, puppeteer code, uh, and I haven't yet gotten to how we interact with the node. Uh, so node interaction is basically HTTP API, so REST API, if you will. Uh, using our library, this is uh, an entire line of code that basically builds the API uh, object. And then you can just interact with our API. Uh, there's also a documentation page that you can access when you spin up your node uh, through a port of 450. Or you always can contact us to like um, if you have any additional questions, or even if you need uh, or think you need an additional functionality. And uh, well, this is the star of this uh, whole example. It's a quick connect to country. Now, it might seem a little bit messy, but if we remove all the logging, if we re remove the retry mechanism and we remove the try catch and just assume that the first attempt will be successful to connect, it's just basically free calls. One is to cancel the co any existing connection uh, because we don't support multi multi connections uh, to different providers from single node, not yet anyway. Uh, we find all the proposals that match the country, so its proposal is just another node that we can try and connect to, and then we just make a connection, and that's it. That's basically the whole uh, the whole code to connect using the API to another node. Uh, there's some authentication stuff, so the old credentials are the same. In my case, uh, the readme uh, explains why. Uh, and then there's this concept of identity. So I think this is uh, the entire web-free thing that we can uh, talk about. So identity is a key store uh, for Ethereum blockchain. That's your identity. That's your private key. Uh, when you onboard your node, register your node, uh, an identity is created. Uh, this is basically your wallet where you will have to transfer a symbolic um, amount of one dollar or equivalent and then an other currency to register your node in order to start working with it, like connect to, to residential IP. Um, so I guess that would be all from my side, uh, I will sh make sure that you will get the link to the repository or you can write it down. It's in GitHub, Mysterium Network slash workshop. Uh, there's an extensive readme file explaining everything. The, there's also a case you can run with a single node if you don't wish to register the whole fleet. Uh, the, downside of it it's it's a bit slower because you have to like disconnect reconnect to another country uh fleet is uh, obviously faster it's running concurrently through seven countries but you can play around with it uh i don't know and if you have any questions you can either somehow contact me through my handle or we have a discord server uh the handle is at calavera you will identify me by my uh, avatar um 
So Donatus, maybe you know uh, you have anything to say? Yeah, so uh, thanks Mantas for, for showing the, the technical part. Uh, and basically what we wanted to show is that you just need to have your idea, like what you want to do, what you want to scrape. And then we can give you the tool which enables you that, enables access from different countries, from uh, different regions, from residential APs to the data you need, and you can have the data you want in, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, you don't need to build the solution from scratch. Uh, you don't have to invest a lot of time in this. We already did that a lot, invested actually a lot of time into building this. And now you can have this permissionless and open source solution for you so of course you have to pay for the usage of the network but then the prices per gigabyte they are very very low i would say so uh i know for for this uh uh for this case we probably did didn't even use uh, one cent or even less um so yeah so i think now we would be open for uh any questions you might have Um, so we see the first question from Guy. Um, what are some ideas that you're more inclined to fund um, or simply ideas that you would love to see on the Mysterium network? Well, so uh, as yeah, thanks for the question. That's a great question, actually. And uh, in general, talking about Mysterium network, um, as, as you talked before, it was built as a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So we have providers selling their, their traffic and, and bandwidth, and on the other side, we have consumers. So the idea can be anything what uses the network. So it can be anything what needs, uh, let's say, residential IP pool. So you, uh, anything what would need access to the internet through residential IPs, not the data center IPs, what was the common use case before for data scraping. Now you need real residential IPs because most of the, um, let's say, websites and then companies, they are now blocking all those data center IPs and you need to go through real connections. So the current uh, use cases, what we have on the network, we have, let's say, decentralized VPN. So we both have our own app as Mystery Network. We also have another company building the VPN app on top of Mystery Network. Then let's say we have another company who is building data scraping solution on top of the mystery network. Um, so these are the current ideas. Uh, some examples of like what, what, whatever ideas could be. Could be a, a, let's say, extension for the browser that it allows you to connect for a browser user to connect to VPN and, and just simply browse. You don't need a separate app. So it's, let's say, an extension for, for the browser, which connects to Mysterium Network. Um, another could be integration with the wallet so that it's more secured compared just to like a plain internet access. Basically, anything what could benefit from VPN connection, from access to residential APs, so basically access to the network. Perfect. Um, so could you tell us about, uh, we, we see another question from Yaram, mm -hmm. uh, some of the successful products built on top of your network? Sure. So as, as just mentioned, I just uh, can go a bit deeper into them. Uh, the first product which we built on Mystream Network, that was our own app and it's, it's available. You can download it from uh, let's say Play Store on, on Android, you can use it on desktop on Windows or on, on your Mac, and that's decentralized VPN. It's called Mysterium VPN, uh, and that directly uses the network. So it allows you to have VPN connection by connecting to any node in any country uh, around the world. Then uh, we have the third party app called Portals, which is using uh, uh, well, which is developing the same decentralized VPN uh, use case, but in a, a bit different uh, model. So our Mysterium VPN, it's pay-as-you-go. So basically, you just pay for the amount of traffic you, you need. That app, Portals, 
is using subscription model. So uh, it's more similar to the all other big VPN players where you just pay some amount of money per month and then you can use as much VPN as you need. So these are two different VPN solutions we have on the network. Then as mentioned, we have uh, another company uh, building data scraping tool on the network. And then they're also uh, buying network in bulk and reselling it to other VPN companies who need access to the residential IPs. So it's not just connecting to one node, but in general buying a network in bulk and reselling. So these are the current use cases, but yeah, as mentioned, can be any ever what comes to your mind. Perfect. Sounds sounds very interesting. And the next uh, question we have is very general, um, but you are a web free expert. So um, what are some of the trends that excite you the most in web free? Uh, well, that's a, that's a really broad question for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like one from, from our perspective, from Mysterium perspective, uh, what excites uh, us a lot is that by having decentralized solutions built on, on blockchain, uh, as for example, our network, we can open the internet. So we can open the internet to, in those countries where internet access is restricted. Uh, it might be censorship, which sometimes of course is hard to overcome. For example, China is investing a lot in, in, into blocking free internet access and it's a constant battle to overcome this. But then there are countries who are just restricting parts of it and using VPN connection just allows to overcome it. And in this case, the more important part that it's decentralized. So it's regular users using VPN connection to other regular users providing that. So it's, it's, uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer solution and uh, having it on blockchain, which also enables peer-to-peer -peer payments so that consumer is paying directly to, to provider. I think that's one of the nicest, the free things instead of having some centralized server taking money, paying to the others. And here is just the real people economy, how to say that. So that's definitely one of the nicest thing I, I could say about the whole all the web free projects. And in general, this decentralization, like having decentralized cloud providers, uh, having decentralized computing providers and so on. So it's it's really nice to see how uh, people all around from world, they can contribute to building, let's say this decentralized cloud solution. Instead of having some centralized servers here, everyone can contribute. So it's like this contribution from everyone, I think, is the key thing here. Yeah, that's 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 a amazing point, to be honest. To finally be able to transact uh, between peers and mm -hmm. do not rely on governments uh, that do not often have the best intentions. Um, exactly. So, um, Courage asks, compared to four chain, uh, Tor chain, or four chain, what is the difference? Um, well, so, well, there are small details. I mean, uh, we could, uh, well, in, in general, uh, I think we are solving the, the similar use case. It's, uh, it's just, I guess, like the technical details on, uh, how these, these are, are different. Uh, and then I think one of the key things is that we are open to, multiple use cases of the network. So it can be a VPN connection, can be data scraping connection, can be this extension for the browser. So we're inviting everyone to build on the network to bring their ideas. And we also offering the seed funding to finance those ideas. Uh, but in general, we, we see the projects appearing which are solving similar problems. And we are actually really happy about that. And, and we are, uh, we also want to, to have partnerships with these projects. I mean, that free is it's not just about cooperation between people around the world. It's also about cooperation between companies. And I think it's, it's also one of the key things because in the traditional world, companies are competing a lot. And in that free space, there's a lot of partnerships and a lot of contribution uh, to each other projects. 
Perfect. Um, and then another question comes from Mah uh, Prasad, Maha Prasad. Sorry. Uh, how do you currently manage the host IP? Is it owned by you or do you have a partnership model? Um, I'm just trying to, to understand. Uh, do, you, do you have in mind the IP address? I mean, if uh, you are sharing your, your IP address, it's, it's still yours. So you're basically just getting, as a provider, you're getting paid for the traffic, which goes through your IP address. Uh, but you're not giving that ownership in, in any way. You yeah, are basically think, just... Think of it yeah. as uh, you're mining our tokens just by sharing your internet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, instead of using computing power, is just allowing someone to go through your node, through your internet connection to access internet. Perfect. Um, I think quite a lot of our attendees are interested in your fund. Uh, do you invest, is it uh, agnostic in terms of the location? So can attendees, for example, from the US also be funded or what are the requirements? Uh, no, we, we, we are open to, to fund projects all around the world. Uh, we, we don't have specific regions. Uh, I mean, of course, in terms of support, uh, our team is mostly based in Europe, so it's, uh, for us it's, it would be easier to support European projects. But anyway, we are open to invest in, in the projects all around the world. So it's, it's no, no restrictions to invest to, for the project, let's say, from US or like from, from Brazil, um, from Singapore and, and so on. And are there any sectors you mentioned, of course, uh, you mentioned some before, but are there some use cases that you would be particularly interested about or you would encourage startups tackling certain issues uh, to apply? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, those I mentioned, those are the ones we are currently building on, but then there are, of course, these... Um, things like censorship resistance. So if uh, you're building some kind of the tool which, which you want to overcome this censorship in then let's say particular country or like the, the company and then so on, and you need access to uh, residential APs, you need access to the network. So to distribute your connection uh, through a lot of different APs for a lot of different countries, that would be interesting to, to work on. I mean, uh, for us, it's not just about to make money, we, are also, we really want to make internet open again, as it was some years ago when it was invented. And then we got more and more of these restrictions. So uh, I would say just like out of I know, personal curiosity, I would really support projects trying to solve this. But in general, we are open to anyone who have any use case using Mysterium Network. Okay, uh, perfect. Guys, uh, feel free to ask some questions in the chat or if anyone would like to join the uh, stream, you can request to join the stream on the top right of the screen and just ask questions in person because uh, that's much more fun than just the chat. <laughs> um, another question. Um, what are some interesting use cases of uh, web scraping? You mentioned a few already in that, mm -hmm. in that workshop. You showed us a few. Could you maybe expand on that? Um, sure. So there are use cases which we're going for a while. So we have a lot of, of uh, flight ticket booking platforms. And in the back stage what they're doing they're also trying to compare the prices from different countries from uh, different uh, booking locations and so on so trying to find the best price the same goes for car rental prices uh, if you use the same company i know like hertz or avis from a different country you would see different prices there are a lot of uh, different things like taxes insurances and so on what comes into play here uh, but then booking from a different country can get a better price. Uh, then, for example, uh, there are e-commerce platforms or e-commerce uh, shops which are selling uh, things for a different price in, in different countries, in different regions, or even in different web shops. So, for example, finding a price for the same thing uh, across, uh, I don't know, 
a, a pool of, of different uh, e-shops and looking from different countries. Um, then another use case, you could, for example, try to collect some, some data for your machine learning or artificial intelligence model. Uh, and then sometimes that uh, would also require connection from residential AP rather than from the data center. And the reason for this is that Recently, we have been seeing trend of uh, these data center APs being blocked if they're used to access some, uh, let's say, websites uh, or like some some databases, uh, just basically to prevent data scraping. And residential APs are the the solution for that. Um, I know, Mantas, do you have also something in mind for this one? Mm. Like I said, I'm working on VPN, not on, uh, on the scraping <laughs> cases, but you know, leisure time also, uh, the services like Netflix, they region lock the content. So at least you could get uh, understanding what's available in different regions. I like uh, they're, they're pushing really hard to prevent this uh, jumping across the globe with the single account, but you know, uh, they're not the only ones out there. So I guess, uh, you know, Disney plus whatever uh, other service you can think of. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, that uh, sometimes what they're feeding you is cached data for like an hour, so you might not even be getting the like up to date uh, information from an endpoint or, or a website. So uh, to mitigate this, you could also use uh, you know uh, proxying uh, for a different provider to like get uh, more fresh data. So uh, that that these these two come to mind. Moment. Yeah, and maybe one last thing to uh, to mention is, let's say, if you look for, for news, just ge general news, and then the country you're looking from, uh, sometimes you would actually see different news, like different news being, uh, like different topics being on top. Uh, and then that's especially important for those countries where there are some restrictions in terms of content, in terms of services. Uh, so that would also allow you to actually get uh, well access to the real information and at least to compare it between different uh, countries what what you what you can see even on the same website on, on news website I, I mean perfect so it's all about democratization of data and the transparency um, yeah definitely one, one of the things yeah yeah uh, Pedro is is joining us here hi Pedro hi Pedro Hey, sorry. Services. I, I wasn't... Uh, so that would also allow you to actually get. Pedro, can you hear us? Um, I'll, Pedro, I don't. Um, I'll... <laughs> sorry, I wasn't Pedro. to ask nothing. I just uh, thought it was a good idea to enter, but. That's here is just for asking, no? Or yeah, right? just for asking. So we'll just get another question from the chat. Uh, Rafa right. asks so, um, then about the fund. Um, is it equity financing or do you also offer debt financing? And what amount do you usually invest for a pre-seed round? Um, so the amounts would be up to 50K. Uh, per, per investment. Uh, I mean, we can always talk and see, but uh, those those are the, the most common numbers. Um, in general, yeah, we are going for the equity. Uh, we could discuss on different on um, different models, but the, the main one would be equity. Perfect. Um, a lot of questions about the fund. Uh, I guess you will get some <laughs> applications from from our audience. Um, That's good. But if um that's it more or less um no one else uh, wanted to join the the video we had most of the questions in the chat uh but yeah thank you so much mantas and and donatas for the for the workshop it was super interesting for our technical audience uh and hopefully uh some of our attendees will be the founders that you back in your new fund yeah so as mentioned we are really excited to be here thanks a lot for having us and yeah, I hope uh, the workshop uh, was interesting. And as Christopher just told, we are waiting for applications. Well, not just applications, can be a question, uh, can be some ideas, maybe things to share, like to discuss. 
Uh, so we are well open for discussion. And yeah, thanks a lot again. Perfect. Thanks. And where can uh, we find you on Twitter or? Um, so yeah. if, if, if you just go to mysterium.network, uh, the main website, so we have all the links there. Perfect. Thanks so much again.